Hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and welcome to RBI 247. As you all know, in this series called RBI 247, we try to discuss some concepts that can be of use to you and they are related to finance and they can be beneficial to you if you are preparing for competitive exams. So, are you ready for question number one? And before moving to question number one, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our uh, channel anujandal.in and subscribing to our channel can provide you with access to a lot of good content and don't forget to press this bell icon here you can see it which is flashing on the screen it can help you to stay in touch with us and get and uh, stay updated regarding every notification that comes up and don't forget to join our telegram group on this group you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible Right. So guys, are you ready for question number one for today? So uh, usually we have a live session in the morning, but due to some technical issues, we're not able to have these sessions. So that is why we are continuing with the recorded format. But um, as soon as the technical issue gets resolved, we will, we will be back with the live sessions. Right. Okay. Here is your question number one, which says Central Board of Direct Taxes, CBDT is aiming to boost digital transactions network in India. And it has recently warned banks of penal action in this regard. So basically, I hope you understand the question. Here it is talking about that CBDT, it wants to boost digital transactions network in India. And for that, it has gave some warning. It has given some warning to banks. And you have to tell which uh, what warning is that and to which topic does it relate to. Right. So moving ahead to the correct option for this question. And the correct option is C which means penal action if they levy any transaction charge on electronic payment modes specified by the government. So it's very simple question. Basically, it is saying that if banks levy any charges, any transaction charge on any electronic payment they conduct. So there are many electronic mo payments that we conduct. And obviously, these payments take place through banks, right? So if banks put any charge on it or if they are asking for a fees for a for a for a payment or for a commission for enabling this payment then they cannot do this as government wants to uh, government want to promote the digital infrastructure in the country right so very simple question transaction charge banks cannot levy it right on electronic payment modes which have been already specified by the government. So basically, Sarkar ne jo jo mode, jo transactions boli hai, un pe electronic payment per uh, transaction charge nahi lagaya ja sakta. Here you can see, came out on 31st August. So directed banks that who, uh, whoever banks have collected these charges from 1st January 2020 to refund the same to customers. So they have told banks that if you have collected it, please return it to your customers, right? Here you can see that this CBDT, CBDT noticed that many banks were imposing some charges and that is why it has come up with this direction, right? So CBDT also mentioned one point. So this last point that's very important that this practice by banks of levying of leaving the charge, it uh, breaches two acts. First of all, PSS that is Payment and Settlement Systems Act. And after that, it also breaches the Income Tax Act, right? So that is why there can be penal provisions under both the acts. So I hope we can move to question number two now. Moving ahead to question number two. Here is your question number two, which says, which rule under the external commercial borrowing route is hampering offshore bond issuance by Indian firms? So basically, this question is asking you something in relation to borrowing activities of Indian firms. Let's see who gives the correct answer. So as you can see, the statements are same. Only some terms are changed. So you have to pick up the correct statement and the correct statement for this and the correct answer for this question is D. So all those of you who have answered as D, you guys are absolutely right. So first of all, we have to understand what is this topic talking about, right? RBI's pricing cap hits India's junk bond issuance. So this has already, this has, this topic has been mentioned by someone in the comments. Many of you wanted me to discuss it. So I hope all those of you who wanted, <coughs> sorry, who wanted me to discuss it, you guys 
uh, understand this topic once we we uh, we end up discussing this question so guys see companies when they need funds how can they do it they uh, and when they wanted to raise that money through debt they issue bond and collect money from bond holders and issue bond in return right so this is how they collect money so this issuance can take place domestically in the country as well as in other countries in foreign countries right so now this topic is this this article was saying that indian companies have not been able to raise funds abroad because of a because of one rule which is pricing cap where issuers cannot pay beyond libor plus 450 basis points i hope you understand the meaning of 450 basis points is it means 4.5 percent so one basis per point is 100th of 1 percentage so see whenever a company issues bonds it has to pay some sort of interest on it right so whenever government issues bond it pays some interest so this is this goes for all issuers but now there is a certain cap placed on the level of the um, the extent of interest that a company can pay to its bond holders right so due to this whenever a company whenever a company who is interested in raising money it wants to attract the investors it cannot raise its interest level beyond a certain level which has been specified in the rules right so there here is when the this pricing cap comes to the play that companies cannot pay more than libor plus 4.5 percent or 450 basis point so we uh, i hope you all are clear with the meaning of libor lender interbank offered rate so all those of you who are not familiar with this term we have discussed it many time in its previous session so if you're not clear you can ask for that videos link and we'll provide you with a link with, uh, and you can check the meaning of libor out right so see do you understand now that if there will be a cap placed on the return that uh, an issuer can provide to its bond holders then it will not be able to attract that uh, um, much investors right so that is why this cap as you can see here offshore junk bond sale so junk bond sale means a company issuing bond which is not very credit worthy which does not have a very good credit rating so it remains subdued many junk companies or many companies with not such a good credit rating they are not able to raise funds because of this law because if they want to attract investors they have to pay higher reward but they cannot raise the reward because of this particular pricing cap as you can see fewer issuers of from india have raised dollar debt dollar debt means debt in foreign currency since march even as foreign investors flush with liquidity pile into indian stock market so guys here we have to consider one thing the behavior of investors in india the bond market is not very developed and those investors who like to invest in bonds they usually go for government bonds as they are safer so in india the bond market is flourishing uh, majorly for the companies having good credit rating but those who do not have good credit rating basically they are known as junk bonds bonds of companies with not a very high credit rating such companies they are not able to raise money in india right so that is why these companies they try to raise money offshore as foreign investors they have an appetite they have an they have a risk taking capacity for such companies but for that for that they require higher rewards higher interest payments which this pricing cap does not allow these companies to pay right i hope now you understand this topic here you can see only four companies till now have tapped the dollar bond market that means they are the only companies which are who have raised uh, foreign currencies debt and out of these three belong to a uh, good credit rating category except vedanta all the other belong to good credit rating category so according to investment bankers muted activity is not due to lack of interest in low rated papers but due to this cap so investors have interest if provided with a higher rate of interest then they will definitely invest in such companies bonds and these companies will be able to raise money right i think we can move ahead to the next question for today and here is your third question which says the dash ratio is also known as is also known as buffet indicator 
after investor Warren Buffett who popularized its use. Very simple question, you just have to tell the name of ratio. Moving ahead to the solution for this question. So the solution for this question is C. So the correct ratio is stock market capitalization to GDP ratio. Just give me a second guys. Now we learn about this ratio. Now as you can see in the formula what is this ratio? It talks about dividing market capitalization so stock market capitalization to GDP. So basically dividing the value of stock market of a country with its GDP is known as buffet indicator. This ratio is known as Buffett indicator as it was a uh, see one time Warren Buffett mentioned that it is one of the best indicators to use. So it was very, uh, popularized by Warren Buffett right, right now coming to the significance of this ratio. So now as you can see this ratio tells you what percentage of a GDP of a country is its stock market right. So if the value of this ratio is very high then we say that then we say stock market is overvalued because obviously see if the if the ratio is going above 100 and if the value of stock market is much more than the GDP of country <coughs> sorry <coughs> then it means that the fundamentals of uh, the companies are not very strong and in that case they are being valued at a higher price than they should be they are not fairly priced right so this ratio tells you whether whether the stock market is undervalued, overvalued or fairly priced as you can see here. So if the valuation falls between 50% and 75% market can be said to be modestly undervalued. So if the value of this is 750% to 70 that it means that the stock market is not valued than it, than it should be. It is valued less than it should be fairly priced right. And it is said to be fairly priced if the ratio lies between 75 to 90 percent and modestly overvalued if it falls within the range of 90 to 115 percent. So, so overvalued if it falls between this ratio. So if it goes beyond this ratio that then it means highly overvalued and if it falls below 50 percent then it means highly undervalued right. So a very simple ratio I guess. So compares the value of all stocks at an aggregate level to the value of total countries output as I just told you tells you what percentage of stock market is what percentage of a country's GDP is its stock market right. Here you can see the formula for calculation market capitalization is being divided by GDP of a country right and to convert it into percentage it is multiplied by 100. So you can use this formula which is stock market capitalization to GDP ratio or popularly called the Buffett indicator. So recently there was an article about Buffett indicator in Live Mint. So all those of you who regularly read Live Mint, I think you must be aware of it. And now moving ahead to question number four. And here is your question number four which says RBI has recently taken some measures to boost liquidity which includes so a very simple question you have to tell what measures have been taken by RBI five statements given to you select the correct option let's see who gets the correct answer moving ahead to the solution for this question and the solution is D so all those of you who have answered as D you guys are absolutely right so the correct statement is only one so only this one is the correct statement, rest are not correct. So see, if you remember RBI lowered the interest rate once it, once it used to be 5.15% then it came down to 4%. So guys do you remember when we discussed about LTROs in our session? So I think we have discussed this two or three times in our session. So all those of you who are not familiar with it, you can ask for that those videos link. They, they are going to be helpful to you to in understanding this question also, right? So LTRO, long term repo operations. So when RBI earlier conducted LTRO, then the interest rates were, repo rate was 
5.15 percent. So basically, RBI lent to banks at this rate, right? But now this rate has been reduced to 4 percent. So now RBI is saying that all those banks who had taken loan from us at this percentage 5.15 when the interest rate used to be this, they can swap their loans, they can swap their facilities, swap their funds and they can return this facility and take new funds at 4 percent. So do you see how it is going to be beneficial for banks because they will have to pay a lower or lesser interest rate, right? Rest statements, they are not correct. So RBI has taken some other measures as well. We are going to discuss about them. So to reduce cost of funds, swapping of LTRO exercise has come into play. Before maturity, so these were the, so the, the, there were different maturities of these LTROs, but now RBI has said that it's okay, you can return the loan before its maturity and we are going to provide you with a new loan with a lesser interest rate. So banks may reduce their interest liability. So I think we have discussed about this. You can read it on your own. After that, RBI is going to conduct additional open market operations involving simultaneous purchase and sale of government securities for aggregate amount of 20,000 crore in two tranches of 10,000 crore each. So operation twist, guys, see, RBI is going to conduct all those measures that it has it has um, it has used earlier so i think the meaning of these operations we have discussed it earlier so there is no point in going into detail about them since most of you know about its meaning and see i'm telling it to you again and again that if you're not familiar with any term please mention it in the comments we'll try to take it up and it if it has been discussed earlier we'll try to provide you with the link of that so here we are talking about operation twist so when rbi used it it gained hype it was so much into the news that rbi is going to use operation twist to keep the long term uh, long term yields lower so that companies can borrow at a lower interest rate now they might conduct some more operation twist opera, some more operation twist exercises of amounts of 20000 crore in two tranches of 10000 crore each so two times they are going to do it on september 10 and september 17 right after that, RBI has also decided to allow banks to hold fresh acquisitions of SLR securities acquired from September 1, 2020. So SLR, this term has also, <coughs> also been discussed. So whatever securities banks are going to buy under this SLR category from September 1, they can hold more proportion of it under the HTM category. So guys, this has already been discussed, SLR, HTM, all terms we have discussed earlier. So see, a higher proportion is allowed to be kept under HTM category of investment. So HTM is a category of investments which is maintained by the banks. So this has been allowed up to March 31, 2021, that is still next year. And after that, it would be reviewed that whether we should continue it or not we should continue this higher percentage or not so from 19.5 this percentage has been increased to 22 percent right see uh, what is the benefit of banks holding more securities under HTM so uh, see they are uh, they are investing into say hold to maturity securities are those securities which bank is not going to trade and it is going to hold those securities until the maturity comes. So it is beneficial for companies because they are going to have funds till the maturity and it is not going to be traded in market and it is beneficial for banks because they are going to get a fixed return or a, or a certain return on these securities, right? So now moving ahead to the last question for today. Uh, this question says insurance benefits have been recently announced for the holders of Jandhan accounts. According to this, Dash will be provided under Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana and Dash will be provided under Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana. So insurance benefits, simple question, you have to tell which insurance benefit under which scheme. Moving ahead to the correct option for this question and the correct option is A, that is life insurance under 
प्रधानमंत्री जीवन ज्योति बीमा योजना एंड एक्सीडेंट इंश्योरेंस अंडर प्रधानमंत्री सुरक्षा बीमा योजना सो दे आर बीइंग ऑफ दीज बेनिफिट्स आर बीइंग ऑफर्ड टू जनधन अकाउंट होल्डर्स हियर यू कैन सी द डिटेल्स सो फर्स्ट जीवन ज्योति बीमा योजना द लाइफ इंश्योरेंस वन अवेलेबल टू पीपल इन द एज ग्रुप ऑफ 18 टू 50 Premium is going to be three thirty per annum, and the coverage is for two lakhs, right? After that, coming to the accident insurance that these people that the holders insurance holders can use in case of any accident, accident, and the age eligibility is eighteen to seventy years. Risk coverage is two lakh at a premium of twelve per annum for accidental death or full disability, or and one lakh for partial disability. So two benefits. covered here full disability and partial disability so basically there are different rules uh, putting disability into uh, two categories so if there is a worker and a factory worker and while working into his factory or doing his job he gets into some sort of accident or while operating into some dangerous machinery he gets into some accident or get his uh, or uh, get gets his arm cut or let's say he loses a limb right so in that case that person is put under the category of disability and the extent of disability is uh, is decided by the rules which uh, which tell us that whether the disability is partial or full right so the reason behind this scheme is obviously providing a social security net for the underprivileged section of the society as you can see they are being provided to jandhan account holders so obviously targeting those who are not already covered under the social security net right so guys these are these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video and if you did then don't forget to hit the like button i'll be back tomorrow with some new set of information that can be of use to you right till then take care of your health keep your studies going on and i'll see you tomorrow thank you for being here